and our flesh to get in the way of our faith. When you are conflicted, the first thing you end up doing is finding fault with those in authority. That's the first thing. They came to Moses and they said, all the promises you made, none we've experienced. Is it true? Can it be true? Moses didn't promise them anything. It was God who promised them. But now Moses is the one of their focus. It was God, follow me in the scripture, you'll see, that it was God who said that I will give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the promised land. Not Moses. Not Moses. Moses was just a vessel that God would use to bring them out of bondage and to bring them into the promised land. But as they sat there, they thought that it was Moses who made the promise to them. You got to be careful with who making promises to you. They came to the conclusion that it was a major conspiracy between Moses and his brother Aaron to punish them in the wilderness. Cynicism has for its foundation bitterness which manifests itself in disrespect. Cynicism has for its foundation bitterness which manifests in disrespect. So they decided to gather 250 elders in the congregation and they came. 253 men came after Moses and Aaron. If you read the text, you'll see it. And they said to, to Moses that you are taking too much upon yourself. What a charge. You're taking too much upon yourself. When you're conflicted as a result of proximity, you get into this kind of, of trouble. Let me show you what they said to Moses. Eight things they, they said to Moses and Aaron. Let's look at them very quickly. The first one that they said to Moses is, you have taken too much of you exercising more authority than you have the right. Verse number 13 in the text. That you have taken too much on you exercising more authority than you have the right. Who gave Moses the right? It was God who called Moses. I want you to see how Moses came into this picture. God did not allow Korah, Dathan, and Abiram to go into Pharaoh's palace. God allowed Moses to go in. When you look at the circumstances of his birth, when they were going to kill all the firstborn male, God saved Moses. God saved Moses for a special reason. And the Bible says that Pharaoh's daughter took care of Moses. It's amazing how God will work in these ways. That you would never think that God will plant you even in the house of the enemy. To understand all of the strategies of the enemy. So that when God brings you into a position of prominence, you understand the strategy of the devil and you're able to deal with the strategies of the devil and see the kingdom of God manifest itself. It's amazing how God works. It's amazing how God works. Number two, they said to Moses, you think you are the only holy ones, but the whole congregation is holy. Was it a question of who being holy or not? It was not a question of the congregation being holy or people holy in the congregation. God is never conflicted about his purpose. God speaks to the head, not the tail. Are oh, you hearing me this morning? God speaks to the head, not the tail. Whenever the tail is speaking to the head, then we've got trouble. Because God does not operate in that way. He speaks to the head, not the tail. And so when they came to Moses and said to Moses, you think that you are the only, you are the only ones, 
but the whole congregation is holy. I can feel it in my spirit how the temperature in God's heart started to rise, started to rise because God had, God saw this playbook before. He saw this playbook before. He saw it with Lucifer. He saw it with Lucifer who wanted worship in heaven. And God said, I am not about to fool with this kind of stuff. You are in trouble and you are going to be dealt with. And so when they came to Moses and said to Moses, you think you and your brother are the only ones holy in this congregation, but God is holy. Yeah. Number three, third accusation against Moses. What? Let's read it. Let, let's read it. You lift yourselves up. Was Moses lifting himself up above the congregation of the Lord? You see, when you are conflicted in your relationship, you start spinning stuff. You start spinning things. You lift yourselves up above the congregation of the Lord. It was Moses that God called to give leadership. And so what Moses had to do? Give leadership. Look at the other one, number four. Moses, you brought us out of the real land, out of Egypt, the real land of milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness. Was it God's intention to kill 